I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Kaidman Marriott, the Managing Director for Western Mines Group. Kaidman, how are you today? Uh, very good, thanks Shay. Yes, good to see you again. It's good to have you back on, uh, especially when there's uh, nothing but good news coming out of you guys. Now, I've just had a quick look at your most recent announcement and something tells me it's all about Hole 36. Uh, these are some excellent results you've pulled out of Mulga Tank. Can you talk me through the numbers? Yes, that's right. Hole 46 we put out um, yesterday. Um, I was going to say there's a bit of a buzz about the office, but actually the boys are all back out at site doing some more drilling. So it's just me <laughs> having a little party here by myself. But um, yes, the results from Hole 46. This is um, further assays from our Phase 3 RC program at Mulga Tank. Um, and we're particularly excited. These showed the highest grade um, or the best high grade intercepts to date across the entire project. There was a two high grade zones. The upper one went about 10 meters at 0.8% nickel of which um, within that there was kind of very much two halves to that. There was four meters at over a percent. And then the bottom half of that was five meters at 0.6%, but with some good copper as well, nearly half a percent of copper. And lower down, um, it's going five meters at 2% at about 280 meters. And um, particularly excited at the potential of that because that's getting on for sort of Cambalda style widths and grades. Um, but uh, obviously we're looking sort of a very shallow intercept there in the RC. We'll talk about what this means for the uh, site overall in just a minute, but I wouldn't mind sort of uh, drilling down, if you'll pardon the pun, on uh, how this was found, because you've already got a Jork resource at Mulga Tank, but I believe these intercepts were found in an exploration target outside that area. That's right, yes. On the back of our phase one drilling um, last year, we put out an exploration target, a Jork exploration target for the, for the project. Um, and we've been following up on that in various phases. Phase two that we completed um, in the first half of the year was very much focusing on the core of that, almost infilling and proving up a, a richer zone in the center of the target area. But now this phase three predominantly steps out further to the south. We saw some uh, nice intercepts in hole 32 and 38 on the very much the, the southern boundary of the exploration target area. And then 46 steps out further south um, and if anything, maybe you can see it's um, it's about 100 meters south of hole 32. And these high grade zones um, look like they're thickening and, and potentially enriching to the south there. Hole 32 returned six meters at uh, at over a percent. And now we're getting sort of five meters at, at about two percent. So uh, with some copper and, and PGEs and cobalt as well. Now, you mentioned before that it looks like it could be a Kambalda style deposit. Uh, however, what does this mean overall for the project? Is there sort of a, a line on site on where this may end up? Yeah, so I mean, over the last the year or so, we've been putting out a lot of very extensive, large, low grade disseminated intersections across across all our, our drilling. This is a huge sulphide mineral system, um, and it's been very analogous to, to Mount Keith, a large, low grade system. But we've been increasingly convinced, and I think holes like 46 yesterday really validates this thesis that it's more of a more of a hybrid system, more akin to a, a perseverance or something like that. And the system's very much got the potential um, to produce high grade massive sulfide as well. And um, part of the key to that is is tenor essentially of these sulfides. And tenor is is how rich your sulfides are because we're seeing these intersections in in the shallow RC. It's um, it's probably only logged as 10 to maximum 20% sulfide content, yet we're getting some of these are three, going 3% 3 nickel. And that really speaks to how rich, how much nickel is in your sulfide and, and tenor. And that's what, um, that's what gets you out of bed at the morning and, and makes, um, makes Mulga Tank such an exciting project. Yet if, this, uh, if we demonstrate a huge hybrid system for the potential for a very large open pit moving uh, millions of tons very efficiently as a large low grade, but we're looking for pods and enriched zones of that where we could have um, you know, very much high grade stuff that will come out as part of the whole mining process. But that really juices up the economics of a project like this. It certainly does. There seems to be favourable economics stacking up here for Western mine groups. Now, I know you've gone and done a lot of digging to get these results today, but I guess what everybody wants to know is what more can we expect from Western mine groups in this area over the next few months? Yeah, so obviously there's, um, we've got about another 12 holes of this phase three program. Um, the assay results are in the lab coming through. We get those, uh, 
those will come out over the next probably two to, to maximum three weeks. And as I said, the guys have just um, are back in the field now. We've got further holes to finish off of this um, program, this phase three program. And, uh, and five holes of that are particularly exciting. We're stepping away from this main, the core of this complex to, again, a completely new zone further up the belt to a tenement to the north, um, which we interpret to be more similar to Cambalda, actually, much um, to Cambalda sort of Kamatiite channel flows um, interpreted by aeromagnetics. Now, the whole belt is under 60 meters of sand cover. So this is all this is interpretation based on air mag. But we're going to put the first holes into those. And if we can confirm Kamatiite geology, um, then that's the sort of the main goal of that. If we get any sniffs of sulfide, then that uh, really opens this up because then we've got a large dunite intrusion of about 16, 20 square kilometers that we've shown is very, very enriched in, in nickel sulfide. And this is potentially pumping out extrusive um, commodiaite ultramafic uh, extrusive channel flows. Um, and we've got 15 kilometers of those to go after. So this is, uh, this is a huge system. Um, WMG owns the whole belt. Um, we're very excited about what the future could hold. Uh, no doubt you've mentioned a couple of key geology words there for everybody listening to get excited about what's happening out here in this belt. Listen, Cardman, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, and I very much look forward to the next update. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Shay.